So not only is Batman Arkham Knight my favourite superhero game of all time, but it might just be one of my favourite games of all time, period. That's why I look for any reason to revisit the Rocksteady masterpiece, and that's why you're watching this video today. Now, some of the details I had already recorded from Arkham Knight were from the Xbox One version, which is looking pretty rough these days. So I went back and recorded those same details on the still stunning looking PC version. Of course, beware of spoilers, and without further delay, Let's get started. So instead of saving the best details until the end of the video, which is the usual YouTube way, let's run through these details in the order that they appear in game, with the first area of interest being Paulie's Diner. Here we are placed in the shoes of Officer Owens, a Gotham City police officer. Before Owens gets to enjoy his waffles, he is poisoned with the Scarecrow's fear toxin and all hell breaks loose. Now, at this point, you're given two options. Either shoot at the feral creatures that are wreaking havoc or instead hold your fire. Regardless of what option you choose, the outcome is the same. Owens is knocked unconscious. Well, I say that the outcome is the same. That's not quite true. If you refuse to shoot in the diner, after your first visit to the GCPD lockup, you can find two officers discussing what happened. God knows how we got out without shooting anyone. The people in that diner tore each other apart. Is it just me? The toxins don't seem to be wearing off. I hope you're wrong. He's going through hell in there. And if you choose to shoot whilst in the diner, those same officers will be having a very different conversation, acknowledging the fact that Owens killed people in the diner. Poor bastard. He ain't gonna be able to live with himself when he finds out what he did in that diner. He's gonna lose his badge for sure. Owens is a good cop, lives for the job. He don't deserve this. This is such a cool detail because the game never demands that you notice the conversation. You could simply walk past and not notice Owens sitting in the cell. Anyway, back to Paulie's. Now, it's never made explicitly clear what happened to the other people in the diner, though you can find the bodies of two people who were in the diner when things went south. During the Shadow War side mission, the body of the waitress who serves you can be found in the morgue, along with the man who reported the person smoking. Again, the game never draws your attention to the corpses, instead letting the player connect the dots. Okay, time to move on from the diner now and onto the streets of Gotham, where we find ourselves in pursuit of one of Scarecrow's henchmen. After disabling the man's vehicle, Batman will break his wrist. Back at the GCPD lockup, you can find the man now behind bars with his arm in a sling. Though seemingly he hasn't learned his lesson as he still goads the Dark Knight from his cell. Well, if you press the attack button, this will happen. Hey Batman, I guess Scarecrow gave you the slip. You broke my wrist for nothing. He's got plans for you, Batman. You and all your friends. Tonight's the night we finally break the bat! Ooh. Now, you might think that's it. You've broken the man's wrist and probably given him a concussion. But when you're next at the station, the man is still talking nonsense, at which point you can make him look really stupid. Things not working out the way you planned? I told you, I've never faced anything like this. So after tracking down the Scarecrow's location, which turns out to be Ace Chemicals, Batman must destroy a bunch of tanks and an unmanned drone before moving on. The whole time this is happening, the Arkham Knight is talking smack in Batman's ear, but he's nowhere to be seen. That is, unless you look to the rooftops. If you look really, really closely, you can see the Arkham Knight watching over the battle. It's a really cool detail that is very easy to miss. So after making your way inside the mixing chamber, Scarecrow gives Bats the slip. Now, if this is your first time seeing Scarecrow in Arkham Knight, you might have noticed that he's had quite the makeover. Well, if you look on the floor of the chamber, you can find the mask that Scarecrow used to wear in the previous Arkham games. So now that Batman is infected with the Scarecrow's fear toxin, things will start to get a little weird. Starting with a flashback to how Oracle, aka Barbara Gordon, ended up in a wheelchair. During a flashback sequence, it revealed that the Joker shot Oracle in the back. What's very easy to miss is the fact that written on the Joker's baseball cap is the word flashback, which given that we are in a flashback, is kind of fitting. 
Oh, and it's probably the best time to mention that if you enter Detective Vision and look at Oracle's back, her spine will indeed be broken, which is something that could have been easily overlooked. Now, the flashback isn't the only time that Batman will see things whilst under the effects of the toxin. When exploring Gotham, the Joker's face will appear everywhere, with most of these appearances being so subtle that many players might have missed them. Here are just a few of my favourites. So those Joker cameos are all really cool, but I've saved the best for last. If you stare at the Lady of Gotham statue and wait for lightning to strike, this will happen. So for a split second, the statue will change into the Joker before changing back. It's brilliant. So it's soon revealed that Penguin might know where the Arkham Knight is holed up, and Batman and Nightwing gate crash a weapons deal to ask him a few questions. After learning of the Knight's whereabouts, Batman decides to destroy the weapons so that they don't end up on the streets of Gotham. Now, before I detonate the explosives, pay attention to this sign, which says Iceberg Lounge, which is Penguin's base of operations. Well, after we destroy the weapons, the sign will now read Clunge. Now, if you're from the UK, you'll probably know what that word means. But if you're not and you don't, here is the urban dictionary definition of the word. I mean, this could be a coincidence, but I highly doubt it. The next detail of interest plays more tricks on Batman's mind. Now, we all know that the Joker is dead in Arkham Knight, but thanks to the fear toxin, he is still present in Batman's mind. But remember, he is not physically there. Well, when you finally track down Oracle, she will also be under the influence of the toxin and seeing a six foot plus man dressed as a bat is sure to put the willies up anyone, let alone someone under the influence of a gas meant to enhance fear. Oracle is in a room with a gun and the Joker moves the gun closer to her, which isn't possible, therefore revealing that this entire scenario is all in Batman's head. Because if the Joker isn't real, he can't move real world objects like the gun. It's another detail that I'm guessing people wouldn't notice on a first playthrough, but may pick up on the second time around. Now, this next detail is relatively small, but it's still something that some of you may have missed. After gaining access to Founders Island, Batman will call in the Batwing to scan for the Cloudburst. What's really cool is, you can actually see the Batwing flying overhead. Like I said, it's a small detail and it does make sense, but it's very easy to miss. Right, time to skip ahead now to Panessa Studios, where Batman must recapture the people infected with the Joker's blood. One of these people is Johnny Charisma, who has locked himself behind a keypad guarded door. Now, what you're supposed to do here is review CCTV footage of the door, revealing the code in the mirror. However, if the concept of mirrors and codes is too much to handle, you can repeatedly enter the wrong code multiple times, at which point bats will do this. This is taking too long. Brute force works too, I guess. So it turns out that if something's in your way, just break it with your fist. Now, after finally locating the Arkham Knight's hideout, Batman has to make his way through a bunch of the Knight's goons. Given that the combat in Arkham Knight is so much fun, it's very tempting to just jump in, fist swinging, and see who's left standing when the dust settles. However, if you opt for a more patient approach, you can actually sit and watch an entire briefing about Batman carried out by the Knight's henchmen. Now, admittedly, this briefing is kind of long, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth watching. Our training, training personally designed by the Arkham Knight, gives us the tactical advantage here. How does he know so much about Batman? Why don't you stay back after this briefing and we'll go see him? You can ask him personally. Who cares? I'm not scared of Batman. You put me in a room with him and I'll tear his head off. And that is why you will fail. He won't come at you straight on. He'll watch you. He'll study you from the shadows, and when you make a mistake, he'll be ready. 
If you need an example of how to act, look no further than right here. There is no way that he'll get near me. Which brings me to point two. The Arkham Knight has chosen me, and me especially, to test out his latest weapon in the fight against the Bat. That vest? What is it? Bulletproof? What good would that be against a man who doesn't use guns? No. This vest offers a whole different kind of protection. What kind of protection? Should I be rendered unconscious while wearing this baby? It explodes. You're wearing a suicide vest? You're crazy! Don't you get it? Batman doesn't kill. Not even indirectly. With this thing on, that pacifist crybaby can't touch me. <laughs> he wouldn't be able to live with the guilt. Besides, didn't I say I'm testing this out for the night? None of you cowards have to wear one. So, let's review our other tactics. Medics. Some of you have been trained in a number of field medical techniques, most notably revival. This is where others have failed. If we maintain our numbers, the Batman will fall. Value the medics. They save your life. Next up, sentry guns. Now you're talking! These automated assault cannons will provide cover. When you're told to place one, you place it fast. It will protect you from attack and make one hell of a noise if he comes at you from that direction. Remember, he may be smart, he may be difficult, but he is human. You fire enough bullets into him, and he'll bleed like anyone else. The automated cannon will lay down suppressing fire and destroy anything within its targeting volume. Your weapons will not. Remember, target the areas you've been trained to target, the legs, the shoulders. Again, do not waste time on the chest. That symbol is designed to focus your attention where his armor is thickest. What's next? Vantage points. Batman uses key architectural objects to his advantage. He can quickly access these points. Think gargoyles, think wires, think where would I hide if I was that sneaky son of a bitch and you'll probably be right. The Arkham Knight has developed a number of solutions to counter these attacks. First one's easy. Destroy the vantage points by shooting them. Simple and effective. Want to stop him from using the other vantage points? Target them with a sticky mine and watch your heads when they blow. When Batman loses the space above you, he'll be forced into the ventilation system. Stop him by deploying thermobaric charges. Fill the vent with gas and burn the bastard. By utilizing these assorted techniques, we can keep him moving and out in the open. Now, let's focus on what Batman will bring to the party. As you know, that suit of his hides a billion dollars of high-tech equipment. Surveillance systems scan the room to help him pick the correct strategy. These systems contain a unique, identifiable signal that we can track. When he uses these systems, we will pinpoint his location and take him down. Any questions? Yeah! You do know that there's no way in hell any of us are wearing suicide vests, right? If you don't want the safety and comfort that only 30 pounds of high-quality explosives strapped to your stomach can provide, then that's your risk to take. But make no mistake, this will be difficult. You are all handpicked, the best of the best. Study these images, use these tactics, and we will prevail. So towards the end of the Arkham Knight story, the GCPD finds itself under attack. It's up to Batman to stop the attack because that's what he does. The thing is, if Batman fails to stop the assault, which would mean that the GCPD gets overrun by the Arkham Knight's militia, this brutal cutscene will play out. Now initially, I never planned to include this cutscene in the video I shared a couple of years ago, mainly because I didn't know it existed. But after legitimately failing this mission and seeing this cutscene, I wondered how many people knew that this was a thing. Right, that just about does it for the main story. Let's tackle some of the side content now, beginning with everyone's favourite know-it-all, the Riddler. Now the Riddler's whole thing is that he thinks that he's smarter than Batman, though it's almost like he doesn't want Batman to fail too badly as that will make his victory less special. For proof of this, look no further than the fifth Riddler trial. If you struggle to land on the third pad, the Riddler will start to lose his patience. 
You can't do it, can you? Does this mean I won? won? Yes. Yes. yes, I won! It feels empty, hollow. Too soon, soon, soon. Look, just hit this switch and I'll adjust the difficulty of the challenge to kindergarten level. Kindergarten level. So after initially celebrating beating Batman, the Riddler decides that this is a hollow victory and doesn't feel as rewarding as he would like. So he provides a button for Batman to press so that the challenge becomes easier. I know I've said this a lot in this video, but this is brilliant. Now Two-Face's whole thing is that he was scarred on one side of his face, so now has two personalities, one being the crazy Two-Face and the other being the not as crazy Harvey Dent. The thing is, you're never really sure which personality you're speaking to. That is, unless you've enabled subtitles. With subtitles on, when talking to Batman as Two-Face, his name in the subtitles will be Two-Face. They say time is the best judge. Well, the verdict's in, and Gotham's time is up. However, when speaking to the Harvey Dent persona, the name in the subtitles will change to reflect that. Sure you're on the right side of the bars, Batman. From where I'm standing, you look guilty as hell. It's a really subtle detail, but I'm a sucker for details like this one. Speaking of Two-Face, the damage on one side of his face is on full display in Arkham Knight. And given the game's overall impressive visuals, you might see more of the former Gotham DA scars than you would like. If you pay extra close attention to Harvey's face, you might notice this. So you can see Two-Face's veins moving as he lays unconscious, which is both really cool and really, really gross. Now, one of the more tedious tasks in Arkham Knight are the militia watchtowers. You must infiltrate said tower, take out any enemies, and destroy whatever the game tells you to destroy. Saying that, there is one watchtower that stands out from the rest. If you approach the gate of this specific tower, this excellent conversation will play out. Look, it's Batman! Let's keep away from the door. Why? He can't get through there. It's solid iron. Hi, Batman. I'm sure you'd love to burst in here, use your fancy kung fu stuff on us, and then wreck our radar console. But, well, you're not on the list. So you're not coming in. Don't provoke him. And don't put your fingers through the bars. Yeah. Uh, looks different up close. Bigger. Kind of mean. And strong. You, uh, think I pissed him off? I don't know. Maybe. Ask him. Uh, Batman? You know I was joking, right? About the whole list thing? I mean, we really can't let you in here, but, you know, we're just doing our job. You're just doing your, uh, hobby. So, no hard feelings, yeah? Is he going? Looks like he's going. Uh, bye, Batman! What the hell are you doing? You don't go to Batman. Oh, hey, Batman! I bet you'd love to come in here and beat the crap out of us. Yeah, he would. And you just gave him another reason to do it. Nah, that's cool. We had an understanding. You don't need to worry about him anymore. Now, when Arkham Knight released, I was like a giddy schoolgirl when I heard the voice of Lex Luthor on Bruce Wayne's answering machine. Of course, everyone knows about that message, along with a couple of other ones that reference characters in Bruce Wayne's life. But have you heard the Joker's voicemails? When under the effects of Scarecrow's toxin, if you listen to the answering machine, these messages can be heard. You have two new messages. Uh, Bruce, uh, this is your father calling. Uh, it's time we had a talk, son. Uh, you know, about the dressing up. <laughs> Next new message. Uh, Bruce, this is your mother calling now. Uh, I just wanted to... Now, this next detail is perhaps my favourite detail in the entire game. As you progress the story, some enemies will come equipped with a tracker that can detect when Batman is using his detective vision. Well, if you stand behind an enemy when they realise where you are, something funny will happen. I've got a lock. He's right behind me. No, 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 no! Ah! <clears throat> this doesn't make any sense. It says he's right behind me. So, the 
The final Arkham Knight detail for this video can be found in the 1960s Batcave set Time Trial. This set is full of callbacks to the show, but how are you supposed to know that if you've never seen it? Well, before making this jump, you can turn to the left and do this. Bruce and Dick, with characteristic speed and resolve, descend promptly to the Batcave. So you can actually watch a small part of an episode of the show whilst on the set of the show. Once again, it's brilliant. So that's it. Thanks for watching and giving me another excuse to play this awesome game. I know a lot of people prefer Arkham City and trust me, I get it. But to me, Arkham Knight is the best in the series. If you are a fan of Easter eggs and secrets in games, then perhaps consider subscribing as that's what this channel is all about. Thank you all for watching and I'll speak to you all soon.